Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening, good evening for someone. Uh, I hope that everyone can hear me clearly. Please uh, write like a plus if you can hear me. Um, Dr. Ram Manohar uh, he, uh, is a research advisor and the founding director of AVP Research Foundation uh, and a research director at Amrita Center for Advanced Research in Ayurveda, attached to Amrita School of Ayurveda, managed by Amrita Vishwa Vidyapitam, uh, the university. Uh, Dr. Ram uh, received uh, a Doctor of Ayurvedic Medicine degree in the University of Bharati Yarka in Bator and in the University of Healthcare of Rajiv Gandhi. And for the last 24 years, uh, Dr. Ram has been working in the sphere of uh, Ayurvedic research. He has, uh, he has been participating in numerous projects and under his uh, editorial leadership, the journal called Ancient Science of Life became the largest indexed by PubMed research journal in the field of Ayurveda. So, Dr. Ram, uh, you're welcome. Let's get started. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, everything is good. Okay. So, a very good morning to everyone. Uh, it's a great uh, pleasure to participate in this webinar and share my views and insights on the status of research and education in Ayurveda. <clears throat> so today I will be <clears throat> discussing uh, about uh, research, what's happening in the field of research in Ayurveda from a historical as well as a contemporary perspective. And uh, a little later, after the discussion on research, we will also have a quick overview of uh, what is the status of education in the field of Ayurveda in India today. Yes, so we'll get started now, and I move to the first slide of my presentation. So we start with a historical review of modern research in Ayurveda, which begins in the pre-colonial period. So I think the origins of modern research in Ayurveda begins when Europeans came to India and uh, started, I had their first encounters with the local medical traditions. They started documenting the medical practices that were prevalent in India at that point of time. So for example, the Portuguese physician Garcia da Horta was perhaps the first person to compile, uh, make a compendium of the medicines used in the Ayurvedic system of medicine. So this was around the 16th, 17th century. And later there was also this monumental work by the Dutch uh, governor, Henrik van Reed, called as the Hortus Malabaricus. So the Hortus Malabaricus uh, compiled with illustrated copper plate diagrams the rich flora, medicinal flora of Kerala. And this was an eye-opener uh, to the Western world, uh, uh, highlighting the richness of traditional medicine in India. And you can also see in the slide a picture uh, of a person whose nose was reconstructed by plastic surgery in India, and this was actually documented by two Britishers and published in the London Gazette. So uh, it's now widely acknowledged that the origins of uh, successful plastic surgery in modern medicine could be traced to this documentation. So the original procedure is described in the classical textbook of surgery in Ayurveda called the Sushruta Samhita. So that's about the pre-colonial period. There's still more history about the pre-colonial period, including the documentation of smallpox inoculation, which was practiced in India. But we'll now go on to the colonial and early post-colonial period. So in the colonial and early post-colonial period, 
his uh, research on Ayurveda was from a historical, Indological and anthropological uh, viewpoint. So many scholars like Hanle, Filioza, Rosu, Zimmerman, Leslie, Muhlenberg, Vujastic, and others brought a lot of interesting information on Ayurveda uh, to modern scholarship. But these were not modern scientific uh, studies to evaluate the efficacy of Ayurveda. So these scholars were not interested in the efficacy of Ayurvedic treatments, but they were looking at the historical perspectives of uh, how Ayurveda evolved in the context of world medicine. So any student of Ayurveda who wants to know the history of Ayurveda must read the monumental work by Muhlenberg called The History of Indian Medical Literature. So. Uh, this book is available in five volumes uh, and is published from Netherlands. Now, it was in the early post-independence period that Ayurveda began to be tested for efficacy and application in uh, healthcare. Uh, so you can see that uh, research to assess efficacy and safety of Ayurveda uh, has a much uh, recent origin. I mean, uh, that is the reason why research in Ayurveda is also still lagging behind. Research for assessing efficacy started much later. And uh, initially, Ayurveda was not studied to promote it as a system, but rather to develop uh, medicines which can be used in modern system of medicine. So, for example, identifying alkaloids from medicinal plants. So this was the type of research that was conducted. So, for example, the, the discovery of riserpine from Rawolfia serpentina. It is derived from the plant called Rawolfia serpentina, of which we can see a picture on the slide. And this riserpin was found to be very effective for blood pressure. So this was uh, developed based on inputs from classical Ayurveda texts. Uh, but later, this medicine had to be withdrawn due to toxicity. So what I wanted to say was in the beginning stages, research on Ayurveda was to use Ayurvedic knowledge to see how it can help modern medicine. So there was also another plant called Trichopus zeylanicus, which is used by tribals in Kerala. And uh, this plant was also studied by a scientific institution and then marketed commercially. So these are some examples of how modern drugs were developed from Ayurveda. So now we look at the more uh, the real beginnings of modern research in Ayurveda, where we are looking at uh, studies which tries to assess the uh, the actual practice of Ayurveda and find out how it can be useful for human health. So this is of much recent origin. So this is uh, of uh, maybe just uh, two decades uh, old initiative, just about 15 to 20 years ago this kind of research started. But this research was also trying to assess Ayurveda on the basis of modern scientific parameters. Uh, and so Ayurveda was being recast or remade in the image of modern science. So we have uh, modern research centers established in this period. The Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences the new millennium initiative for you know technological leadership uh, which included uh, initiative on traditional medicine uh, there are several initiatives from the government of india which was trying to give validity to ayurveda by doing scientific studies so the traditional knowledge digital library called as tkdl is uh, should be mentioned in this context. Uh, because when 
more and more research happened on traditional medicine, uh, a lot of uh, foreign countries, scientists from foreign countries started taking patents on uh, plants used in Ayurvedic system like turmeric and neem. Yes, so the TKDL was created to provide data that will prove that, you know, information was already there in Ayurvedic texts and so to prevent the commercial exploitation through patents. And so it's important to know that in India, uh, people are very sensitive about uh, no, people from outside India doing research on Ayurveda. So there's always the fear that information might be patented and commercially exploited. So for those who are working on Ayurveda from outside India, this is an important point to remember. So now we come <clears throat> to the postmodern initiatives. So this is very, very recent. So certain new approaches have developed in the research on Ayurveda. One is called the reverse pharmacology approach. Yes, the reverse pharmacology approach means that instead of starting research work from the lab and then going to the clinic, you start from the clinical practice of Ayurveda, validate the treatments, and then go back to the lab to understand the mechanism of action. So uh, it is a clinic to lab approach that is now promoted for Ayurveda research, not a lab to clinic approach. And then there's also this very important project that has now been promoted by the Prime Minister's office and uh, also now taken up by the Department of Science and Technology, the Government of India, called the Ayurveda Biology. So these uh, Ayurveda Biology tries to validate the basic concepts of Ayurveda, like a constitution, like the Tridoshas, so it's the first attempt to validate Ayurvedic concepts about the human body. Yes. And there's also a new approach called whole medical systems approach, uh, which tries to study Ayurvedic treatments in all its complexities, not looking at one single herb or one single formulation, but the entire, uh, you know, package of Ayurvedic treatments that is given to a single patient. And then uh, there have been uh, collaborative researches, uh, you know, supported and funded by the WHO, the World Health Organization, as well as the National Institutes of Health, USA, taking Ayurveda research to the global level. So that we can say in the last few years, we have the true beginnings of Ayurveda-centric research. Yes. So, we just looked at an overview of how research evolved on Ayurveda from pre-colonial times, starting with documentation and then study from a historical perspective, then studying to develop modern medicines, and now finally uh, trying to understand Ayurveda. So this is how research has evolved. So if you look at the last decade, the last 10 years, there have been some path-breaking research that has happened. So the National Institutes of Health USA funded a research study on rheumatoid arthritis in Ayurveda at Arya Vaidya Pharmacy, AVP, Coimbatore, where I was working earlier. And then the department, the Ministry of Ayush, also funded a research study on osteoarthritis at, uh, at the Charité Medical University, Berlin, Germany. And then there was a series of research studies funded by the Prime Minister's Office, the Government of India, <clears throat> under a project called a Science Initiative in Ayurveda, ACA, with the latest study establishing the correlation of Prakriti with genomics. Yes, yes. So I was just telling that the last uh, one decade, there's been these very important research initiatives, and all of them were very positive uh, and validated the practices of Ayurveda. Uh, so I would like to first of all talk about the National Institute of Health funded study on rheumatoid arthritis of which I was the principal investigator. And uh, this study received uh, recognition for Ayurveda in Europe for the first time. 
So this study for the first time attempted to compare classical Ayurvedic treatment, not one medicine or one formulation, but individualized Ayurvedic treatment for the management of rheumatoid arthritis against methotrexate. So here for the first time, uh, placebos were developed for classical Ayurvedic formulations. So, for example, Ayurvedic uh, formulations are very difficult to mask with placebos because they have smell, they have specific taste, but by using food additives, it was demonstrated that placebos are plausible even for classical Ayurvedic formulations. So this was the first study that demonstrated that uh, Ayurvedic treatment was comparable and uh, equal in efficacy to a DMARD or a methotrexate. And uh, we found that there was a significant difference in the treatment outcomes between six and nine months when we compare Ayurveda with allopathic medicine. Yes, we go to the next slide. So here you can see uh, a graph, uh, a histogram, which is telling what were the outcomes of the treatment. So the blue uh, color represents uh, the group which received uh, methotrexate and placebo Ayurveda. And the red represents the group which received Ayurveda and placebo methotrexate. And the gray represents the group which received Ayurveda and we are only to in common. So, yes, so these were the three groups. And what you can see here is that uh, you can see three, uh, you know, categories. The first one is the assessment of 20% improvement after treatment. I just show, can you see the can you see the arrow? Yes, yes we do. Yes, so this is the 20% improvement after 24 weeks. And this is after 50% improvement after 24 weeks. And this is 70% improvement after 24 weeks. And here you can see the same after 36 weeks, 20, 50, 70. So what has happened here is that after 24 weeks, it was found that uh, Ayurveda group had maximum change, 20% uh, improvement, very less 50% improvement and nobody in the Ayurvedic group showed 70% improvement. So you can see for 70% improvement, the Ayurveda group is zero. But if you look at week 36, we can find that the maximum people who got 70% improvement are in the Ayurveda group. So this shows that Ayurveda treatment needs to be taken for a little longer to produce better results. So uh, I hope this uh, message was conveyed. If there's any clarifications, uh, we can deal with it later because it's a very complex study and I'm trying to summarize it very briefly. So we go to the next slide. And uh, 150 patients were randomized into two groups receiving standard of care Ayurveda and allopathic treatments. Yes, and uh, this was assessed by ACR criteria and the preliminary data shows that Ayurvedic treatment was three times, you know, better than the allopathic treatment in management of osteoarthritis. So there was the series of studies funded by the Prime Minister's Office, the Government of India, which looked into uh, the foundational concepts of Ayurveda. Ayurvedic formulated uh, to see if they can suppress neurodegeneration uh, and uh, of uh, development process. And uh, you know, these included studies to assess 
Ayurvedic formulations, suppressing neurodegeneration in fly models. And the latest study, which uh, uh, found out that there is a clear correlation between the Ayurvedic constitution called Prakriti and, and, you know, And this was published in one of the journals. And this is the first time that an Ayurvedic publication so in this slide you can see this is just a picture from the journal which shows uh, it's an open access uh, article so anybody can so these are all really uh, major steps in the research of Ayurveda in the last three, four years. Now if you look at uh, where research is happening in Ayurveda, there are about five environments. So these are the MD and PhD programs. There are research centers within educational institutions where research on Ayurveda happens. And then there are the government research centers under the Central Council for Research in Ayurveda. And then there are the private research centers. And uh, even research publication in Ayurveda has grown very slowly. We have only three PubMed Scopus Index research And only one of these is Scopus Index, J. A. The other two are PubMed indexed. The, uh, and the Ancient Science, Science of, of Life, life is, uh, was from uh, where I worked earlier, the ABP Research Foundation. I continue as the chief editor. Yeah. And uh, there are now two research databases that have been developed for Ayurveda, which enable scholars to search for research articles. One is called Dhara, dharaonline.org, and the other is the ayushportal.nikpo.in, which is from the government of India. The Dhara Online was developed uh, uh, by the ABP Research Online Foundation. Uh, ABP research. So now there have been also other interesting initiatives uh, for global research network for Ayurveda. Uh, and in uh, Europe, uh, we have uh, Indra, the International Research Network global and uh, two research seminars were held in 2014 in Germany, and this year we have a seminar in September in Germany. And in modern, modern India, there is now a, a move to bring Ayurveda and modern medicine together as integrated medicine. And uh, uh, where I worked earlier, ABP Coimbatore is already involved in some of these research universities. Other и также организация ABP, like в которой я Germany, Charity, ранее работал, Berlin, она также вовлечена. So there are also now uh, interesting publications that have come out on Ayurveda and integrative medicine. One is from Springer, and the other was uh, integrative approaches for health. Elsevier, I think the academic press. Uh, so at Amrita University, where I'm working now, we are also uh, started uh, an initiative for uh, And uh, at Amrita University, where I'm working now, there is also a move to develop uh, integrative medicine, collaborative uh, treatment protocols. In uh, and the immediate focus is so for AIDS. Uh, we are looking at uh, whether CD4 count can be prevented from falling down. So если говорить о конкретно о СПИДе, то мы... So there are many gaps in research. Uh, in Ayurveda... Ну, so следующие слайды, слайд, собственно, они просто объясняют вот points, эти think, uh, правила, о которых мы говорили. What I want to say is that uh, uh, we need to look at Ayurveda как мы as хотим, uh, a new model of understanding the human body, health and disease. Цвете, uh, мы yeah. What I want to say is that we need to look at Ayurveda as a new model of understanding the human body. So if we try to see the human body, so if we try to see the human body, so if we try to see the human body, so if we we можем пустить если мы будем смотреть только на отдельные рассматривать только отдельные молекулы because ayurveda is already being practiced for many centuries 
it's very much possible to start with human studies because medicines are already being used so even though there is not much uh, time to explain this i want to briefly mention that in the ayurvedic textbooks also there are много времени но всё-таки я хотел бы заострить and today we are сегодня мы стараемся в наших исследованиях объединять подходы как аюрведические так и подходы so uh, there are methods for validating knowledge and evidence in ayurveda ayurvedic texts talk about chance effect real effect how to и нам сегодня нам не чтобы валидизировать знания и доказательства в исследованиях по аюрведе нам необходимо this is the challenge for future research on ayurveda но, к сожалению, не в той форме, в которой их может понять современное общество. Именно поэтому ответ нет, потому что исследований, которые... So the challenge is more of translation rather than producing new evidence. Okay. So I was telling that is the conclusion of the status of research the challenges for the uh, new era of research in Ayurveda is the translation of traditional а, Yes so now we go to the next part is an overview of the education So both любые uh, образовательные программы как основные programs are regulated um, by the central council And so the courses offered, the major а, courses на этом слайде вы можете видеть основные курсы по обучению Айурведы, а, начинается они с тех доктора медицины в Айурведе, обучение. Ну и следующая степень – это доктор наук в Айурведе, обучение проводится на протяжении. So there are all there is also a BAMS course for international uh, students being uh, conducted at the Gujarat Ayurveda Также University. Существует, uh... And then there are other courses in Ayurveda, MSc Medicinal Plants, B Farm in Ayurveda. Существуют также and другие PG курсы по Ayurveda, такие как And if you look at the overview of the syllabus, если мы посмотрим на содержание всех subjects. So there is the study of the classical Ayurvedic texts, вот эти, like the Charaka Samhita, um, Sushruta Samhita, Ashtanga. And then there are also the study of modern subjects like anatomy and physiology. And uh, these degrees uh, will give license to the Ayurveda graduates to practice Ayurveda. Которых, and in some states, they also говорили, practice emergency modern medicine. 15 тысяч человек выпускаются из более чем 250 аюридических. И сейчас я хотел бы сказать несколько слов о исследовании, сможет ли устройство Ведопульс, аппаратно-программный комплекс Ведопульс, оценить. 53 subjects who attended the hospital here were assessed both by the Veda Palace device as well as the physicians. So uh, what we did was uh, in the blind dead study in which uh, the patient would be first Собственно, как проводилось это исследование? Это было слепое исследование, а пациенты сначала были обследованы АПК ВИДОП. 27 человек или 64,28 пациентов. 
И после проведения капа-анализа было выявлено, что, что данное исследование показало существенный факт, что это пульс крайне точно оценивает публикации в юридические журналы. В последнем слайде я хотел бы рассказать вам о So more details can be obtained from the uh, uh, from the Veda Pulse website. So this course will give a comprehensive overview of the entire scope of Ayurveda, starting from basic concepts. You can see in the slides is just a classification of some of the topics that we dealt на... with during the no, course. So that is uh, what I had to discuss today. So, Dr. Ram, the first question is from uh, Alexei. Uh, he's asking about uh, the electronic library of traditional knowledge. Uh, is, uh, and Alexander also asks, is there is a, like, is it in a free access? Uh, no, actually, uh, this is... Uh, being created to prevent the misuse of traditional knowledge. So this is only at the moment accessible to patent offices in about 34 international languages. So okay. Second question is from uh, Alexander. Uh, what is partial agreement? Mm -hmm. ha, partial the, ma the major, you mean the major you know, dosha. The first dosha uh, is uh, correct. And the second dosha, uh, mm -hmm. The major, the major dosha, the major dosha, the most dominant dosha is correct, but the other two doshas are not so dominant, so there may be slight variation. Uh, so, like you know, pitta and kapha are almost similar. So, the software says kapha and the clinician says pitta. Okay, thank you. Uh, but there's not much uh, variation between the two doshas. Alexander Lisnichova. That has been correctly. Well, uh, Dr. Ram, I guess this is it. Uh, there are no no questions. Okay. And thank you very much for this uh, very valuable information that you gave us. And this was a wonderful opportunity to hear a world-renowned expert as yours.